All right, we're going to be talking about the ship of Theseus, which is a paradox involving identity. We've seen a paradox involving language, the Sorites paradox, and a uh, moral paradox, the uh, moral dilemma. And today we're going to look at a uh, paradox involving change over time and the nature of identity. This is, we could call it a metaphysical paradox. In order to uh, get the paradox, um, we need to first just set up and define a few um, distinctions. Um, and I'm going to do that in this video. So this one will be short, and then the next video will uh, set out the paradox. So words and phrases like identity, identical, the same as, very same thing, um, and on the other hand, words like uh, non-identical, distinct from, uh, different from, uh, very different from, all of these. These are uh, words for identity and distinctness, and they are all ambiguous between different two different kinds of identity and two different kinds of distinctness. And to get uh, to understand the paradox, it's important to make make sure we're all clear on the difference between. Um, what we can call numerical identity and distinctness on the one hand, and what we're going to call qualitative identity and distinctness on the other. So numerical identity and distinctness is the sort of identity that you use to count up the number of individuals there are. So here's, here's some examples. Um, so my mom lives nearby, and uh, sometimes when I go over to her place, she's got old uh, pictures of me and she'll pull them out of the box and uh, say like let's look at this this old embarrassing picture of you from 1995 and uh, um, she uh, so imagine she says um, look you're you're the very same person you were uh, back in 1995 this four-year-old you is identical with you now um, there's one understanding of what she says then that's uh, obviously false. Uh, like I've changed a lot uh, and look a lot different and psychologically I'm a lot different. Um, but obviously that's not what she means. She doesn't mean that you're, you know, the height of a, of a four-year-old. Um, what she means is that you're numerically identical with that little kid in the picture. In other words, although you've changed, you are still the same person that, uh, you know, that she raised when, when I was little in 1995 or whatever. Um, there she's using identity or identical with in a numerical sense and not in a qualitative sense. Or consider this, uh, this, ex this sentence. This old watch is the very same watch my grandfather wore during World War II. Now, clearly the watch is on a different wrist than it used to be on. Maybe now it's kind of rusted. Maybe it doesn't work anymore. Um, but still, it, of course, is, can be true that um, it's the very same watch as the one your grandfather wore in World War II. It just is a uh, numerical sense of identity rather than a qualitative sense that's at work there. Likewise, um, identity... And dis uh, likewise, distinctness has a numerical and a qualitative sense. So uh, take the sentence, this is a different house than the one I lived in uh, back in 1995. Um, that is, uh, at least ordinarily, uh, that's using different uh, or distinct in a numerical sense. It's literally a different house. It's not, you know, the same house that looks different. Like I now... I've, I now live in a physically different house than I did back then. Um, so that's all numerical identity and distinctness. By contrast, here's qualitative identity and distinctness. It's the sort of identity or sameness, um, depending on what you're saying, or distinctness, that's used to compare and contrast properties um, of or qualities of something. So for example, if I say, I have two identical dogs, um, what I'm saying there is that the two numerically distinct dogs I have look look very similar. They have the same colors. They 
are about the same size. They're the same age. Um, in that sense, I'm not saying that I actually have two dogs that are somehow literally the same dog. I'm saying I have uh, two dogs that look very similar. They're numerically distinct, but qualitatively they are similar or with respect to say color, they're qualitatively identical. Um, or take this expression, your car is exactly the same car as the one I had back when I was in college. S suppose I said that to you for whatever reason. Um, I don't mean like literally you now own the same car I uh, once owned. What I'm saying is that our cars look very similar. So that's a qualitative sense of identity. Or take, I'm not the same person I used to be. Uh, unless, you know, unless something really drastic has happened, usually when somebody says something like that, they just mean I've changed a lot, right? Um, I've undergone changes in property or qualitative changes, but I'm literally still the same person in some core sense as as I used to be. Um, or take, this watch is different than it used to be. The sense of different there clearly is um, a qualitative one. Uh, maybe it's gotten rusty, maybe it doesn't work anymore. It's numerically the same watch, but it's changed in terms of its properties. Okay, so that's the basic uh, distinction to just get a handle on before we talk about the paradox. Numerical identity and qualitative identity. Um, and the paradox trades on uh, numerical identity over time. Um, and we'll see that there's a puzzle that lands us in a contradiction involving numerical identity.